invite us to stand together as we receive our gospel this morning. We are in the gospel of St. Matthew in the 21st verse, beginning at the thir- at, in the 21st chapter, beginning at the 33rd verse. It's on page 24 in the New Testament section of your Red Pew Bible. Jesus is speaking and says, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then the landowner leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized the slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, the landowner sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, the landowner sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized the man's son, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to Jesus, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, They realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded Jesus as a prophet. It's the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. About a month or so ago, the ushers handed us a yellow postcard as we entered worship that looked something like this. And on this card it says, This week I'm being called to serve the Lord by. And then a blank area for us to write our ways in which we are hoping to serve the Lord. It's a charge that you and I are given every time we leave a worship service to go in peace to serve the Lord. On that day, one of the questions that I posed and asked was, why don't we spend some time ever checking in with one another when we come back to worship the next week? How did you do going in peace? How did you do with this whole serving the Lord thing? Now, I was pleased on that weekend with the response of these yellow cards that weekend. We got about 15% of the cards back that we had distributed and turned out, that turned out, or handed out that weekend. And, And I'm sorry, but in the world of church work, church work, I'll take 15% response or effort any day of the week. The cards that were returned were prayerful and thoughtful reflections and offerings about challenges and struggles and celebrations and longing for hope that you and I experience each day in our walk of faith. It's been humbling, and it's been a great blessing and a great honor for me as one of your pastors to hold these hopes and dreams, these fears and failures in prayer over the past month. There are many times in Scripture where it's possible for us to put ourselves inside the text, to look at the text and hear the text using allegory, to to read it or, or experience this piece of Scripture allegorically. In today's Gospel reading, for example, the landowner could be with God, the vineyard with God's reign in Israel, the landowner's slaves with prophets, the son with Jesus. But who are the tenants? In this parable, the tenants are the chief priests and the Pharisees, the religious elite, the leaders of the temple, the people who are starting to get a little bit irritated with this dude named Jesus. So are you ever the landowner? Maybe you're the boss or a supervisor at work or you're a parent or a friend who has authority over someone. Or have you ever been a slave, one of those slaves you've been killed by someone at one time or another? 
I mean, remember the fifth commandment. You shall not murder is the fifth commandment. In our Lutheran small catechism, it explains this commandment by saying, we are to fear and love God so that we neither endanger nor harm the lives of our neighbors, but instead help and support them in all of life's needs. Brothers and sisters, you and I kill our neighbors on a daily basis in ways that have nothing to do with ending their physical existence in this world. And then we come to the tenants in this text, the, the farmhands of the landowner who are charged with caring for the land and taking care of it. I don't like these characters. I don't like these characters at all. But as I've prayed through this gospel reading this week, maybe the reason why I don't like the tenants is because they speak most directly to who I actually am or how I often catch myself behaving as I walk through our journey in this world. Lutheran pastor Andy Doyle believes that placing ourselves as characters in scripture readings is challenging at best. He makes this claim because so many times when you and I put ourselves in a text like this, we put ourselves in the place of Jesus or of the prophets. And when we do that in today's lenses and with today's ears and eyes, we often end up creating the gospel and forming God's mission for the world into our own image, not the image of God. And by doing that, Pastor Doyle argues, we close the door to Jesus and to the message of the prophets and essentially close the door to what God is calling us to be as God's children. So just what is it that God is calling you and I to be? C.S. Lewis once wrote that you never know how much you really believe anything until its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life or death to you. You never know how much you really believe anything until its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life or death to you. So brothers and sisters in Christ, fellow tenants of God's vineyard at this time and in this place, I ask you, do you believe that the mission God is calling you to live out in the world is a matter of life or death to you? Another leader in the church today helps us frame this around the picture that might help us. She says that our call is to be fruitful while we are here, not to struggle for ownership or control. We don't run the show. We aren't in charge. All authority belongs to God. Every atom, every molecule of creation is God's. Your call in mind is to be fruitful while we are here. I ask you, is, is that a matter of life or death for you? Let me share a couple of ways that the Spirit has led me this week with this text to put a frame around it for us as we live out our faith together in this little corner of God's vineyard that we know as Western North Dakota, in this little place that we know and love simply as Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. It might mean that you and I can be fruitful by raising money for Camp of the Cross so that our Bible camp can build a long overdue fellowship center that will bless fellow brothers and sisters in Christ for generations to come. It might mean that you and I can be fruitful as we gather at the Shepherd's Table events that begin this week and will continue for the next couple of months. Through Bible study and prayer together, we will wrestle with big questions about God's call for our congregation. This coming week on Friday and Saturday, we'll ask the question, why, for God's sake, does Good Shepherd even exist? It might mean that you and I can be fruitful by supporting one another as we journey through each week trying to go in peace, trying to serve the Lord, knowing full well that we're going to fail from time to time. And when we do fail, we'll be fruitful in picking each other up and encouraging each other to give it another try. You and I can be fruitful and succeed in going in peace and serving the Lord from time to time 
And in those times, when we do, in fact, succeed, we need to celebrate together. We need to celebrate the goodness of God working through our hands. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, I look forward to seeing more of these yellow cards from you. I promise you that I will keep holding them in prayer. Because you and I have been given an opportunity. We've been given an opportunity and invited to discover the goodness of the work that God is doing through us. The goodness of the work that God is calling each one of us to live out every day of our lives. And let's not forget, let's never forget that the cornerstone of all of that in our life together in faith is the Savior of the world, Jesus the Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.